Hey guys, so today let's talk about certificate management in Kubernetes. Because in the past I only showed you how to obtain SSL certificates in your ingress controller with traffic. But some people pointed out that this has some limitations and there is a better way of doing it. And you are absolutely right, so I spent some time researching and I want to show you a way to decouple the certificate management from traffic and do it with a separate tool instead. And this works great with any other ingress controller as well, like Nginx for example, and it makes the certificate management in Kubernetes extremely easy. So let's start and take a look at Cert Manager. I guess most of you have worked with SSL certificates before in Kubernetes and you might know that managing them isn't always easy because if you want to expose an application securely via HTTPS, you need to somehow get a valid SSL certificate for it. And the most common way to do that is probably with Let's Encrypt, but sometimes you might also have to add and manage a self-signed certificate. And of course, you want to ensure that these certificates don't expire and are automatically renewed. That's what I was doing with traffic before, and I have configured Configured it to automatically obtain a Let's Encrypt SSL certificate for any application deployment on my cluster. And that works pretty well in a small Kubernetes environment. You can very easily expose all your services and workloads with trusted SSL certificates, but it also has two major disadvantages. So first, if traffic as your ingress controller is also responsible for managing the certificates, it is a central point of failure. So if anything goes wrong with it, or you might want to switch your ingress controller later, you need to reissue all your SSL certificates. And second, if you're planning to use it in bigger environments, traffic really doesn't support Let's Encrypt in a high available setup, at least not in the free version. And that's why traffic itself suggests using the cert manager in these scenarios to decouple their certificate management from it. Cert Manager is a free and open source tool that can add and manage SSL certificates from many supported resources like Let's Encrypt, HashiCorp Vault or Venify. And it makes the certificates available to the entire cluster because it stores them as secret objects. So they aren't stored in a persistent volume, instead they are stored in the Kubernetes database and that makes them accessible across the entire namespace so you can access these certificates from any application, even in high available deployments. And I want to show you later how that's working together with traffic, but technically you can use Cert Manager in any combination with any ingress controller. And I think that makes it a perfect solution because this application can run on your Kubernetes cluster and this is just there for one reason. Obtain certificates and make them available as Kubernetes objects for the entire cluster. Let's get a bit more practical now and let me show you how I'm using the cert manager on my Kubernetes cluster. And to demonstrate that to you, I thought it might be a good idea to just create a new Kubernetes cluster and start with a fresh deployment of cert manager. That is actually very simple for me because I can just create a new Kubernetes cluster on my favorite cloud provider, Sivu, who is also sponsoring this video, by the way. So just a few words about Sivu. It is a cloud native service provider that can deploy a Kubernetes cluster in just about 90 seconds. It's very comfortable to manage through their web interface, a terminal client or Terraform. Really cool. And they also offer a fair pricing for their services. If you want to follow this video along, you can just try it out with a free credits and deploy a new Kubernetes cluster with traffic. So just go to the Kubernetes menu and select create new Kubernetes cluster, just give it a name, just select the appropriate sizing and then if you scroll down you can see that it should be automatically deployed with traffic as your ingress controller. So you just can click on create a cluster and wait a few minutes until this is finished. And once the deployment is done you can just click on the cube config to download it and authenticate to your cluster and then you're ready to go. So this is exactly what I've done, I've not configured anything else on this Kubernetes cluster. I know this was a bit fast, but I guess if you're watching this video, you probably have worked with Kubernetes before. And if you haven't, you can still follow along because this is a very beginner friendly setup to get started with. And if you want to learn more about it, because you're not quite sure about all the terms and tools we are using in this video, I've made a ton of content about Kubernetes and more stuff is definitely coming. So check out the playlist about Kubernetes here on the channel. I'll link you that in the description down below. And if you haven't already done it, subscribe to the channel and like the video. That's really helping me out. Okay, so once you have the Kubernetes cluster ready, you can install the cert manager, which is also pretty straightforward. So you will find the instructions for the cert manager on the official homepage, and then you can install it with kubectl or also with Helm. So that is what I would do. I always use the Helm package manager to install it because I believe this is just the easiest way to do it. So first you need to add the Jetpack Helm repository to Helm and then update it. So you make sure that you're always using the latest version. And then before you install it, 
it, you should also install the Kubernetes custom resource definitions. So that's important, otherwise the Kubernetes cluster doesn't know the resource types you need to define later when you're issuing and managing the SSL certificates. And there are two ways to do this. So you can apply the custom role definitions with a kubectl command and just apply this one. Or you can add this parameter at the end of your Helm package manager command. So let's do this. So this command installs a cert manager into a separate namespace, which is automatically created if it doesn't exist. And at the end, I've also set the parameter to install the Kubernetes custom role definition. So let's hit enter. And this may take some time, so just wait for it and don't worry if you don't get any output. And once this is finished, you should see that the deployment of cert manager is complete. And you can verify if everything is working correctly by just querying the resources in the namespace cert manager. So let's switch to it. And let's get all the pods that are currently running. And then you should see three different pods, one for the cert manager, the k injector, and the webhook. And that's it. That's all to install the cert manager in Kubernetes. You can now start configuring the certificate resolvers to obtain your first SSL certificate. By the way, if you're watching this video, you don't need to write down any commands or templates that I'm using in this video because on my personal GitHub page, I'm maintaining a repository that will help you in this case. So in the boilerplates repository, I'm maintaining all the different templates for various projects like Ansible, Docker Compose, Terraform, and also Kubernetes. When you go in this folder, you can also find find the cert manager templates I'm using in this video. Okay, so let me show you the first object that is always needed to get a certificate and this is the issuer. The issuer is a Kubernetes resource that represents a certificate authority. So if you have watched my videos about SSL certificates, you or you may already know, a certificate authority is responsible for generating and issuing certificates. And the cert manager also has a different concept for an issuer and a cluster issuer. Because the issuer can only work in one namespace. So that means when you want to use it across multiple projects and generate certificates in different namespaces, you need to use a cluster issuer instead. And that's probably the best way to do it, so I just know a few reasons why I would want to use an issuer instead of a cluster issuer, but yeah, that might be different for your scenario. The cluster issuer YAML file that I've created on my boilerplates repository that can work as a template. You might need to change a few things here, but first you need to decide whether you want to get a certificate from and if you're using an HTTP or a DNS challenge. So in my case, I wanted to get an SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt by using the DNS challenge. And I think that's much easier than using an HTTP challenge. It also allows you to use wildcard certificates, but it requires a few things to be prepared. So first you need a DNS provider that allows you to use a DNS challenge to verify the ownership of your domain. And most big DNS providers support that and have clear instructions how to set up the authentication. For example, I'm using Cloudflare to manage my DNS records, so I have a few domains that I'm managing here. And by the way, Cloudflare is also a real DNS registrar now, so you can't just manage your domains with it. You can also buy them directly from Cloudflare. And they are one of the cheapest providers out there because they don't take any additional fee for registering top-level domains. They have a very interesting page about the pricing for their domain registrations, so it's definitely worth taking a look. But anyway, you don't need Cloudflare by any means. So you can also use any other DNS providers, but it's actually pretty easy here. So to complete the DNS challenge for SSL certificates, you first need to create some credentials on your DNS provider. On Cloudflare, you just need to log into the web interface and then open your main profile. And on the left menu, go to API tokens. So here you can create a new API token or you can just use the API keys. That's what I'm using. So you can just view and copy them and then create a Kubernetes secret object to store them in your cluster. So let's do this and create this secret. You will also find a template for this on my boilerplates repository. So here you can just uncomment these lines depending on if you want to use an API key or an API token and just place your API key in here. So let's apply these credentials on my Kubernetes cluster. Now the cluster issue doesn't need to be placed in a specific namespace because it can work in the entire Kubernetes cluster. So you just need to fill in a name. For example, I'm using the ACME issuer here as a name for the cluster issuer. And I've also configured my email address that is also needed. And you should also choose which server we want to use. So I have added two separate servers in this template, the Let's Encrypt Production and the Let's Encrypt Staging Server. 
So you can use the staging server to test SSL certificate, but it will be never trusted by any client. So if you're using it for production, always use the production server, of course. And next to configure our DNS or HTTP challenge, just like I said, I uncomment these lines here to configure the DNS challenge on my Cloudflare provider. So I just added the email address and the API key. So I just added a reference to the API secret objects that I've just added and added the credentials to. And that's it. So you don't need to add anything else. There are some optional parameters for selecting the DNS names here, but we don't actually need that because we specify the DNS names later in our certificate. So let's just save this and apply this uh, cluster issuer template to our Kubernetes cluster. And that's it. We can now start issuing our SSL certificates by using this object here. So let me now show you how to generate a simple SSL certificate by using our cluster issuer. And I've configured it to get a cert from Let's Encrypt. So with the kubectl command, I also want to create a new namespace because certificates are bound to a specific namespace. So let's create uh, the namespace nginx test, for example. Oh no, let's, let's better create the namespace nginx1. So that's a bit better. And let's go into the certificate template now. And in this template, we need to enter the correct namespace for this project. So I want to call it nginx1. And the secret name is actually the name of our secret where the certificate will be stored later in. So when you want to refer to it in your ingress objects or in your applications, you always need to refer to this name. But I just name it all the same, otherwise I might get confused. And in the issuer reference, I need to fill in the name of the cluster issuer object. So in my case, the ACMA issuer. And now it's very important that you change the default kind issuer to the kind cluster issuer. Otherwise, it doesn't really work uh, because this cert will always search for an issuer object and not for the cluster issuer object. And you should also fill in the correct DNS name. So in my case, I want to add a DNS name for the subdomain nginx1.clcreative.de. So on Cloudflare, I also need to add the this in my DNS name. So let's go into my domain and go to DNS entries. And now I need to copy the public IP address of this cluster. So let's go to Sivo and let's copy this public IP address and add another record for nginx1 and fill in the IP address uh, of the cluster. No, I don't need to select proxy because otherwise it will use the certificate of Cloudflare and not really from the cert manager. So always deselect the proxy status here and click on save. And now we can start applying this certificate resource here. So let's go to Kubernetes and apply the cert production here. And now when we apply the certificate manifest to Kubernetes, the cert manager will start the generation process. And if you're wondering what is now going on in the background, you can check this by executing the describe command onto the Kubernetes object, which is a certificate. And I need to switch the namespace, obviously. And now you can see what is going on. You can see that this is currently starting to issue a new certificate, but there's not m much more information about it. But um, there's also another object created, which is called certificate request. So this is what's happening in the background. And let's describe the certificate request to find out what's going on. And you can see that this is currently pending. So it might take some time until the certificate was issued for you. So you might spend some time troubleshooting this, but all the log files and events are stored in these Kubernetes resource objects, and you can always get them with a describe command and find out what's going on. So in my case, let's check it again and let's see if it's working now. Uh, yeah, you can see now the certificate is issued. You can see everything is okay. It's approved. All the statuses are true and the certificate is fetched from the issuer successfully. So now we can start using it in our projects. Great, so that's how you can obtain and manage SSL certificates with Cert Manager. And I think that's even much simpler than doing it manually or using your ingress controller. Because we're using the Cert Manager to generate and manage our certificates, we don't need to do all this stuff in traffic anymore. We just need to tell our ingress objects to use these certificates that we've just created. Let me show you that. 
so first I'm going to deploy a simple Nginx test project. So I will go over this very quickly because I've explained this in previous tutorials. So this file will just add a new deployment of an Nginx web server to my Kubernetes cluster and create a service object from the type cluster IP. So that means the Nginx container is just accessible from inside the Kubernetes cluster and I will later create an ingress object to expose it with traffic. Now I will expose this service object and this would typically just use the default traffic SSL cert if we wouldn't have specified this further. And because I have already generated this SSL certificate, I can just refer to it by using the TLS attribute in our ingress object and enter the host name correctly, so that's important, and just refer to the secret name. So this will be just the name of our certificate. So what you have put in here, the specifications of the certificate, the secret name, this should match the secret name in your ingress object. So let's try to apply this now. And let's check if everything is running. So the container is currently creating, so that may take a few seconds. And let's try to open this website now. So let's go in here and you can see that the certificate is valid. And you can see if we go into the details of this certificate, this is just the certificate that was issued by the cert manager. So really, really nice. So I hope this was interesting for you. To be honest, I should have done this earlier instead of managing SSL certificates in traffic before. But yeah, this of course only works in Kubernetes and not in Docker. So it's still sometimes useful to know how to obtain SSL certificates in traffic. Anyway, whenever I'm working with Kubernetes now, I will now use the cert manager to manage my certificates. I haven't tested it for self-signed ones though, but I guess it's pretty much the same. I just added another template for self-signed certificates issuer in the Git repository. So that's needed when I want to use it for a Kubernetes cluster that I'm self-hosting in my internal network. By the way, speaking about my internal network and my home lab, in case you're wondering what's going on here, so I'm planning a ton of content in that space. So we will talk about K3S and self-hosted Kubernetes at home. I'm really excited to start working on this project and I hope you will enjoy it as much as I do. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Take care everyone. Bye bye.